Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Beulah Presbyterian Church on this second Sunday of Advent. I don't know if I need my glasses or not. Cataract surgery is wonderful. You can see things that you never saw before, and you can't see things that you used to see with no trouble. So if you ever have cataract surgery, go full bore. It's a lot easier than putting glasses on and all that other stuff. And unfortunately, and some of you may attest to that, who have had cataract surgery, is when you're reading something, it's right at the wrong height. You either need your glasses or you don't need your glasses or you need to do both. And I see some nodding, nodding heads out there. So let's look at the uh, announcements. I'd start with uh, one that I didn't see in here is the Fern Creek Highview Ministries is uh, right up the street. And they do a lot for Christmas and they do a lot through all, throughout the year. We are... Sorry about that. We are supporters of them in many, many ways. You would not believe how many people are underserved out here and how many people need the ministry that they provide and so on, which leads right into our Christmas tree in the back for items such as gloves and socks and so on. So if you have that in mind, please do that as well. It's Pledge Sunday. And I did not see that in the bulletin, but it is Pledge Sunday. If you have been, um, let me set these down. If you have contributed or signed up for the upcoming year as a pledging member or a pledging person of the church, we greatly appreciate that. If you have not and are interested, please talk to one of the ushers in the back, and they will be glad to give you a form to do just that. The other announcements, which now I cannot read. <laughs> Sorry. I did this a couple of weeks ago at a different church, and everything was just the right size and shape, and I had no trouble. Um, if you are, if you need something at the church to be sent out or put in the bulletin, please email. Uh, Carol at uh, Carol at BeulahPres.org. She is the secretary. She's recovering from uh, knee surgery, but all of that is still being taken care of and attended to. Um, like I said, we're sponsoring the Warm and Fuzzy Tree in the back. The Advent Devotional Guide, there's still some available also in the back. And the Mission Commission will make a fruit basket and deliver after worship on December 19th to our refugee families. If you're not familiar with the refugee families, we have taken on two, I believe, um, families that have are refugees, and we are supporting them with uh, a lot of different effort. And again, to learn more, talk to one of the ushers or so on, and they will be glad to share that information with you. And finally, in your bulletin is the joy offering um, notice. Joy offering is usually taken around Christmas or on Christmas Eve. And it goes to support ministry, um, retired ministers, retired ministers' families, uh, incoming ministers, and so on. And is definitely a important part of the work of the Board of Pensions, which is the financial arm of the Presbyterian Church. I would also call your attention to the. Um, To our prayer list, remembering prayer, Carol Doherty, Peggy Oliver, Mickey Rader, Bobby Lenbar, and so on. Um, Katie said that Judy is doing much better and will be on a leave of absence for several, for a couple of months or so, and everything seems to be doing well. So those are the announcements that I have. Are there other announcements that anyone wishes to share? So, seeing, so let us proceed with the Good morning. Please rise in body or in spirit and join me in the call to worship. Embrace the word of God. 
for the word of God is God's gift to us. Enjoy the word of God, for the word of God brings joy to us. Study the word of God, for the word of God enlightens us. Come, let us celebrate God's presence with us. said, I am the light of the world. Today we light the candle of peace, knowing that only Jesus can bring true peace to our lives. Please join me in prayer. O oh God, as we worship together, plant your spirit in our hearts so that we may be at peace 
and share your peace with the world. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, mighty God, and author of priests. Amen. Let us open our hearts to the truth of God's love. Let us unashamed, unashamedly ask for forgiveness and find peace in the love that is bestowed upon us through the gift of life offered in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we ask for your forgiveness. We seek to be good people, but we struggle with so much that deters us from being the good people we want to be. We often ignore underserved because we do not know them or they are somehow not, not worth our job. We are tired of things that weigh us down and we don't want to hear more or do more about the needs of others when we have so many needs ourselves. Forgive us and help us find peace. And we are grow as servants of your ways and truth, and especially your love. Amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ came to forgive, not condemn. Let us believe the good news of God's love. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. If you can please rise and body your spirit for the passing of the peace. We will still stay in the pews. Hear the words of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of John. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as others do, I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. May the peace of Christ be with us all. Peace, everybody. All right, if you all sit over here for a second, if you don't mind. So does anybody know what this is? A Christmas tree. It's one of the few times I've done a children's sermon where they got the answer I expected. If you've ever been up here, you know what I mean. You ask the questions and you have no idea where it's going. What do you see on the tree? With symbols, right? They're special symbols. And they represent something to do, I guess I should take this off, something to do with God. Okay, I'm going to show you one and see if you can tell me what you think it might mean. Let's start with this one. You have any idea what that is? Looks like, a, if it had a top on it, what would it look like? It's, uh, well, I've never really thought of it looking like the Trinity, but that's, a, that's an interesting standpoint, see? All right. This is a, a cross, only it's missing the top. And one of the reasons 
There are a lot of other different crosses up there. Do you see any other ones that look like crosses up there? There's one here. There's one here. There's one here. There's one there. There's one here. Plus there's other symbols as well. All of these symbols are called chrismons. And I have a little sheet here that has a lot of names of them on that. If anybody wishes one, I have three or four, or you can look it up online, like you can find everything, Google Christmas, and something pops up. But I wanted you to know that on this tree are special ornaments that represent something about God or about Jesus or about our faith in them. I'll give you one more. This one I think you'll get right. What do you think this represents? Help him out, Don. A manger. A manger. Good job, Don. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's a little tricky. So put this back up here somewhere. But I just wanted you to know there's a butterfly. What do you think a butterfly might mean? Butterfly for resurrection. A heart for Jesus should be in our heart. The Ten Commandments, three circles, each representing a part of God, and so many more. If you ever get a chance as you grow up and see these from year to year, take a look at different ones and say, well, what do you think that means? There's a lamb back here. Jesus is the Lamb of God. Fish. Fish is a Christian symbol from way back, and there's a lot of meaning to that, and so on. But I just wanted you to know that each of those ornaments as a special meaning about God. Let us share a prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for your love and our celebration of that love. Not only through symbols, but our actions. Amen. God of truth, help us to hear your scriptures with open ears and understand your scriptures with open minds. Amen. Today's first scripture is from Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably upon his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant, David. As he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets, prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace.
Also, before we uh, start, and I've set this up here and I knew I'd forget it, these are new communion cups. So on one end is the bread, and on the other end is the cup. And I was reminded, don't open the cup before you turn it over to get the bread. <laughs> so leave it this way, open it up, we'll share the bread, then turn it over and share the cup. These are the best that we can do with these little things, and as much as they seem self-explanatory, it would be very easy for some of us to <laughs> open them incorrectly. So keep that in mind when we do communion. The uh, second scripture is from Malachi, and the first thing I would expect you to say is, Malachi, where's that? Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. I'm trying to find it. And if you have listened to Handel's Messiah, the passage that we will be sharing today should have some familiar tones to it. So listen for the word of God. Behold, I send my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in which you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and, refiner and purifier of sil silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver till they present right offerings to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and in the former years. The word of God for the people of God. think I might be able to read it without my glasses. The book of Malachi, if you can find it, like I said, is the 39th book of the Old Testament, the last of the book of the minor prophets. There's major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, and then there's 12 minor prophets, Hosea through Malachi. And for whatever reason, some of them escape. Some of them that you have heard of quite often, Hosea, Jonah, others. And the difference between a major prophet and a minor prophet, as I understood it, is how much they had to say, the length of their book. But Malachi finishes up the Old Testament in preparation for the New Testament, in preparation for the coming of Jesus. And Malachi, if you read all four chapters, is very harsh. He's not happy with the people of God. Not one bit. You have given false offerings. You have given not of your time, not of your effort. You have rebuked us and then said, look at me, I'm a, word of, I'm a man of God or a woman of God. And then we come to this passage where Malachi says, who can come? Who can abide the day of his coming? And the short answer is no one. We have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the long answer is the New Testament. God did not want us to feel we were astray or lost, so he sent his son Jesus. He sent his son to say, you are worthy, you are forgiven, you are my children. But getting to that point is not easy. Society, and I may have strayed from where Malachi is leading, but this is where I thought it should go. Society encourages us to not follow the word of God. Society encourages us to amass wealth. 
honor our heroes. And usually the heroes are from Wars One, And that's not just an American thing. It's throughout the world. Who do we honor? Bezos and Gates and other ones, because they have so much money. Or we take stock in sports heroes. As I said, here's my in passing analogy to sports them. And we think of them as being wonderful people or movie stars. And you can put whatever little tag you want before some of these people. But is that what we really want? We idolize these people, but what does that say about us? What does it say about the peace that we have within ourselves? When we look outside of ourselves to find peace. It is said, and I looked it up, and it was true when I was in seminary some 40 years ago, that over 40 countries, societies, sects, cults, whatever you want to call them, are at war with each other where over a thousand people have been killed. And year after year, it's between 40 and 50 different conflicts throughout the world. Yesterday's newspaper, and we're familiar with it in other ways, or maybe it was in something that I Googled or whatever, said Afghanistan, after the Americans left earlier this year, is now facing starvation and famine and still struggling. Syria, other Middle Eastern countries. Russia is supposedly amassing forces at the border with Ukraine. The list goes on and on. Outwardly, it's a mess. And inwardly, we are often a mess too. As I said before, we honor our heroes. We can name general after general. Just in America, Washington, Sherman, Grant, Eisenhower, Patton, and many others. But how many Nobel Peace Prize, or Prize winners can you name? One, two, three, five? Can you know what, who won it last year and for what? 2020, the Nobel Peace Prize winners were the World Food Program, an organization who seeks to better conditions to alleviate hunger in more torn areas. In 2017, it was won by the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons. In 14, it was won for efforts against the struggle for the rights of children, particularly in the area of education. In 13, the Organization to Eliminate Chemical Weapons. In 11, the struggle, a nonviolent struggle for women's rights. The list is over 100 years long. And it is an effort by people who have struggled with their inner peace, but have made enough peace inside of themselves to reach out and say, we can make a difference or I can make a difference. Jimmy Carter received it several years ago for a lifelong achievement and working for homelessness and so many other areas. And many of the people that win in these organizations that win have names that I cannot pronounce. And most of the ones that I listed, I had no idea were even out there. And I think that's us too. 
I bring that up, as I just said, because these people and organizations have struggled for finding peace, but realize that peace was not out there if it did not start in here. So when Malachi says, who can abide the day of his coming? These organizations are saying, we might not get it all right, but we are certainly working to make the world better. Certainly working to make the world understand that peace is a, not just an option, but a prerogative or a mandate or a reality that we should all reach out for. In reading through things for this sermon, I came across one, and I just remembered it, that said, we can feed everybody in the world. War should go on the ash heap of history. Wouldn't that be nice? If that every soldier who came back from his service or her service said, I never had to lift my arm or my weapon in anger. Wouldn't that be a much better world? But we say, wait, wait, it's hard for us to believe that that can happen because I trust you or I trust me, but I'm not sure about some of the other people. And that's the issue. That's where we struggle. We get lost in that I'm okay, but I'm not sure about him or her. So that's the global picture. What about us? When we get together over Thanksgiving, over Christmas, or just for a birthday or other celebration, we don't usually talk about peace initiatives or homelessness or hunger or famine. We talk about, we ought to do this more often. Let's turn on the ball game and see who's winning. Let's argue about whether you're a U of L fan or a UK fan, or if you're in Indiana, whether you're an IU fan or a Notre Dame fan, or if an Ohio, Ohio State fan, or UC fan, and you know the picture. We're all aware of those things, but as the prayer of confession said, I want it out there way too often. For out there, I don't have to look about at it or know about it. One homeless man was reported to have said, people don't care what happens to me. They just want me to go away. And that's where it's hard. The world then inundates us the other way. Turn on the TV. Go for all the gusto. Look out for another one. Does that make us more at peace? Does it make us safer? Do our children feel safer or more at peace when there are regular live shooter drills, if not live shooter events like happened just this week? and the doors of their schools are locked, and if you've gone to any recently, and this is not just recently, I would say over the last 20 or so years, if not more, push the button and say, I'm here to pick up so-and-so, or I'm here to see whatever it might be. When most of us who were here, when we were growing up, opened the door and came and pleased as we went, We don't feel at peace when we look on the internet and see our neighborhood watch saying, I saw a strange car the other day. I saw a tall man walking through the neighborhood after dark, and I'm thinking, that might have been me. I live here. And they're talking about us walking through the neighborhoods, not about welcoming, but about having more fear. But Jesus tries to break those bonds that we hold with the world. 
His words reflect a different sense. Love your Lord, your God, and love your neighbor as yourself. A neighbor the other day who had just moved into my neighborhood said, I work for one of the restaurants, and in general, when I move into a neighborhood, a new neighborhood, I buy a whole bunch of wings and knock on the door and say, I'm your new neighbor, here's some wings. Wow. I still don't know all the neighbors on my street. And I would say that's not uncommon for most of us. But Jesus says, turn the other way. Reach out. Make a difference. My peace I give to you, as was previously stated. Not as others give it do I give to you. I've said this before. When I was candidating for a church in Ohio, right outside of Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, the pastor nominating committee's last question was, how do you reconcile the peace of Christ and the peace of the Department of Defense? After I decided not to run away right then, I said, they're entirely two different things. The peace of the Department of Defense is about protecting our country. The peace of Jesus Christ is about opening your heart to the love of God and sharing it with others. The Bible was filled with people, and I used the same ones over and over, Zacchaeus. He had no peace in his heart until Jesus had invited him down to break bread, share some moments with them, not treat him as a corrupt tax collector, but as a human being, a person who needed to experience love. The woman at the well, Saul who became Paul, who was adamant, adamant about following the law until he realized the law does not change hearts. Interactions, love, caring, changes hearts. And even the disciples, Peter in the Garden of Gethsemane, pulls out his sword and strikes the soldier. And Jesus says, put away the sword. That's not going to change things. Your love will change things. So I want to sum it up with a story that I read, which is a really neat story. There was a bus ride, and may have, some of you may have read it or seen this story. City bus in New York City, could be any city, Los Angeles, Paris, London, Rome, who knows? But this time it was New York City. And it was cold and wet. Traffic was horrible. And the people would get on the bus and they'd bump into each other and they'd snarl and they'd do this and they'd sit down and they'd look at anything but each other. Pregnant woman got on. Nobody even noticed or offered her a seat. The atmosphere was charged negatively. Until the bus driver stopped at one of his stops and said, people, I have a suggestion. I can't change the weather. I can't change the traffic. But what I can do, as you get off, I will hold out my hand. And I want you to take your hand above it and drop your troubles into my hand so that you don't take those troubles home with your family this night. That your heart, even if it's just for this moment, will be changed. And maybe it's that seed that will be planted. And people listen. Instead of nudging for a better seat, they nudged and said, I'm so-and-so. Good to see you. I've seen you on this bus before. And the atmosphere changed dramatically from one of solitude, selfishness, 
worry to one of sharing and caring and laughter burst out in some areas. And as each person got off, the bus driver was true to his word. He held out his hand. And person after person, as they got off, held their hand over his and dropped their troubles into it. And he said, I'm driving by the river. And as I drive by the river, I'm going to open my window, hold out my hand, and drop your troubles into the water. Maybe that's the start we need. The seed that needs to be planted in us that says, I can find peace within myself. I don't have to be angry when that person cuts me off. Or something is delayed or we go to wherever it is and the line is much too long. And instead of saying, oh, I'll say, let's find peace within us. For that is what Jesus invites us to do, to lay our troubles in his hand and let him carry them to the cross and beyond. Will all of our troubles go away? <laughs> Not even. But we can face them a little differently, with a little more peace in our heart for we know that there is someone who will cry with us like he did with Mary and Martha, who will dine with us like he did with the disciples and will do with us later, and Zacchaeus and so many others, who will walk with us like he did on the road to Emmaus, and will ask forgiveness for all of us in the midst of his pain on the cross. It is hard of anything that might be more important than that. Making a difference in the world starts by making a difference in ourselves. How can we expect the world to find peace if we cannot find it in ourselves? Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us to find peace within ourselves. Encouraged to share that peace with others. To open our hearts to your love. And to love others as you have loved us. Amen. Now I invite you to share for the affirmation of faith. The affirmation of faith is the Apostles' Creed. Many of you know that. Um, many of you don't. It's printed in the bulletin. And I invite you to share with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, and we will share the sacrament of the Holy Communion as soon as I find the microphone.
Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from east and west, north and south, to gather at this table that the Lord has prepared for each of us. For this table is prepared for saint and sinner alike. So come, let us find a place at the Lord's table. Let us pray. Almighty God, who brought the universe into existence by the power of your word, who established the sun, the moon, the earth, and spun the stars into being and called it good, who laid the cornerstones of all that is, all that was, and all that is to come. We give you thanks. And we further give you thanks for your son, Jesus, who walked with us, who shared his life with us in story and parable in action and in love and went to the cross that we might have life and have it everlasting. And we give thanks for your spirit that fills us with the truth, with the joy of your love, with the guidance of your word, that we may walk humbly before you. Let us share together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. <coughs> Temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus took the bread, he blessed it and he broke it, and he shared it with his disciples saying, take, eat, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. And likewise, he poured out the cup before them, saying similar words, take, drink, all of you. This is my blood, which is poured out for you, which is poured out for the remission of sins. And I say to you, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do remember the Lord's death until he comes again. So. Using the bread side up, take the bread, and we'll share it together. Friends, the body of Christ, broken for you. And likewise, after sharing the bread, he shared the cup saying, take, drink, all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us share the prayer after communion. Holy Spirit, you have filled us with your life. Christ our Savior, you have embraced us in your love. God our parent, you have fed us with your grace. Now send us out to the world to share your life, your love, your great work with all. Amen. Let us stand for the closing hymn and remain standing afterwards for the charge and benediction.
We have heard the word shared. We have heard the word proclaimed. We have shared the Lord's table. Let us go from this place renewed with new energy, new hope, and a new peace within our hearts. And now may we go this day and every day with the love of God, the very peace of God, and the very fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.